something really cool? Timber! We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey, good morning everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape and I am sitting in our beautiful, yeah, no, it's beautiful, our beautiful aqua garden. The reason I'm back here today is because I've wanted to redo these aqua gardens for quite some time. And last year we put in a really, really, really cool swim pond that we'd been looking at doing for some time. And after we finished that swim pond, I was even more motivated to redo the entire aqua gardens. But this was the whole catalyst behind the aqua gardens. This is the original Stack Slate Urn. Sat here with my little stone chisel, like boop, 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 and built this thing. This then turned into everything else back over here or inspired kind of the aqua gardens and to create a place where people could walk around, good ideas, and so on and so on. It's just getting a little tired. It's not that the water features are bad. In fact, this waterfall I love a lot. But yes, we're ripping it out. We're going to give it a brand new look. I'm not sure if we're going to build it out of the same type of stone. We might build it out of aqua blues. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to get rid of these basalt columns. And I want to give everything like signs and names and prices and so on and so on and more of a story. But I want you to kind of come through here and be inspired all over the place. So there's a couple reasons we're redoing it. One is it's tired. I know with retail and gardens, we should always be changing and evolving and showing new techniques and new styles. And believe it or not, we've got some. The other reason is I want this to, like when people come back here, for it to be a little bit more educational and more of a story. So as they walk through, each one has more of a little storyboard. And we're going to write up a name, for example, for this waterfall that we're going to redo behind me. A name for the bird loving stream. Maybe it'll be as simple as bird loving stream. I don't know. But we're going to redo that. Right now I see that swim pond back off in the distance. I want to block off this wall of the pergola structure and do some hanging type panels, some artistic type panels. Purpose of that is so you can't see what's beyond it. I want you when you come in to really focus on this waterfall. This tree, Louisa Crab, when it's all leafed out, actually hides these bowls a little bit more. But then you'll come around this way, keep walking, walking. Once you got around these future panels that hang down, you'll come over here. Then you'll really discover the big swim pond. I want to put a chair right here, some sofas here, do a new pond in here. This pond is going to be more of our koi pond. I want to go three and a half, almost four feet deep with the thing. I want to bring that pond right up into this space. These trees are all going to come out. Hate, hate losing mature trees, but all of these spruces have a scab or something on them, some type of mite, and we can't get it under control. And with injections, we can't get it under control. And so they probably have another five years left. So the thought was just take them down and we'll plant new ones. So for every tree that we take down, we'll plant two more new ones and I'll be okay with it. Obviously this gets all kinds of furniture and stuff down in here. We'll come down the stairs then back up the stairs. And this is one of my favorite areas in the aqua garden is this little secluded cove back in here. When these trees are all leafed out, it just feels awesome sitting underneath the canopy of these trees. And yet there's not a cool water feature back in here. So a lot to do. It's going to feel so different when these trees are coming down. And I think in a matter of minutes, the guys are getting ready to actually pull these things down, but we'll see how it goes. So when it comes to building water features, inspiration comes from all over the place. The UK was such an awesome trip and last week we didn't actually get the time to show you everything that I got to see. I thought it was so important to show you guys some of the different water features that I got inspired by and hopefully it inspires you guys. It would have made last week's vlog two hours. So this week we're gonna put in the rest of my trip to the UK which I think you guys are gonna love because I get to take you on a personal pond tour just around Pond College where there was over over 16 different water features and show you what inspired me to change our aqua gardens completely. And I'll have to tell you something, after 28 years of building water features, I still get inspired. There's things that are always kind of triggering my creativity and Mark definitely triggered my creativity. I can't wait to show you guys what we're gonna do to our aqua gardens because of the way Mark's pond college looks out there. Come on, let's go check it out. Hey guys, so are you ready to do this? Here's the thing, we're gonna do the pond tour now because it's not raining nearly as bad as they say it's gonna rain tomorrow. So I thought it'd be a perfect time to take you on the pond tour. Let's 
let's start off with number one. Awesome little boundless waterfall. I just love it. I love the sound of it. This literally has like maybe a dozen total rocks in the whole thing. Really gentle flow. We're talking about a grade change that's less than 12 inches tall. And I think it's just incredible. So they snuck this one in just to show you what's possible with a DIY backyard waterfall kit. But love the flow of it. Love the look of it. It's got a nice twist and turn and it just looks incredible. The only bad thing about it is it's right next to the parking spot. <laughs> so this is where they've got this parking spot right here and then they've got this little waterfall over here. So there's that one but then as we come around this way which is way more the entrance to their place you can just tell that there's a lot to see in the backdrop. This was one of my favorites not just because of the aesthetic look of it using all of those spillway walls. You can see they used the top of one of our stack slate spheres, turned it upside down, cut a little notch in there and created a really cool little waterfall. Drops all the way down into the bottom half of a stack slate sphere and then it drips over. Here's another stack slate sphere literally cut into the wall over there. They've got a patio bowl with the little notch in it and all of this stuff going on to feed a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. So that pipe right there comes off of the downspout over here. Every time it rains, which is daily out here in the UK, water goes into this and then they can borrow water from this to fill up other features or water or landscape, whatever they want to use that water for. This is a cool little feature. It's really just more of a moss garden and home for a lot of these carnivorous plants, which are really cool. As we come back this way, they've got a local artist that painted up some of the scalloped urns and we got to have this kind of stuff back home. So we've got scalloped urns. There's artists all over the world. We just got to get somebody to do them. These are my favorites. They put a totally different finish on them. Kind of did this like metallic black faded into blue and then have the really cool fish on them. So cool. I think we're going to use these in our wetland just to give us a little extra flow. Come around this way. This is where Mark needs to have a storyboard because this is one of the things he's most passionate about. You see these little snails? This is what got him into the industry. When he was eight, nine, ten years old, he'd constantly go down to the local creek, collect snails, and he wanted to build an aquarium really just for snails. So he's got this kind of educational garden in here with all different types of aquatic plants sitting into the backdrop, different snails. And so they come down here and they can learn about different aquatic plants. Looks like a parrot's feather type plant in there. I have no idea, but love this section. And I think a storyboard with Mark's face on it over here, just kind of explaining what all this is would be really cool. We move around to number one, two, three, four. We have what we call the lockdown pond. Back when there was COVID, he had nothing to do. Nobody could do anything. So he built this pond. I love the size of it. I love that his dog, Louie, comes and sits on that rock and watches fish all day long. My favorite part is, of course, the waterfall. Really, really interesting rock in there with all that texture. Super cool. Right Absolutely love a great sound. That's a 6,000 mile call, so people are always asking, how do you hide them? Once all those grasses come up over there, once plants fill in around here, you'd never know that there was a bio call back in there. So he's done an incredible job. In fact, all of these ponds, guys, like look at all the aquatic plants that are sitting down in here ready to sprout up again. This is, I don't know, it's uh, March, beginning of March. And if it looks like this now, just imagine what this place is gonna look like in another month. Let's continue the journey. We come up this really cool deck staircase almost a boardwalk type look. As we get up this way, I want you to turn around, come this way, not focus on what's off in the distance. We come around this way and we come over here and Mark White single-handedly built her own little aquascape feature. So she dug this pond. This is a four by six foot little pond, a cool little waterfall. Comes up like so. Bunch of grasses up in there. It looks like vinca kept growing down and over. You can see all kinds of other little plants starting to pop. Gimmer box on the side. If Mark's wife can do this, anybody can do this. She built this pond by herself, but she also built this really cool, gentle, on this waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. A great little bench. We sit down in the bench. We really get to enjoy this space that much more. Now, normally I would show you my favorite spot to the end, but it's not at the end of the journey. But I am so inspired by this space. I think this little Japanese garden, this little Zen cave they have back in here is so, so incredible. I'm so inspired to do something like this back at Aqualand at some point, and it'll be fun to do and just be a blast. But as you come into this space, you can't help but pay attention. Like the big rock back there draws you in the way they
they've raked out all the gravel, that kind of zen garden. And then you come up this way. As you get to this point, you notice a little waterfall here. And it's a negative edge pond, all fed by this weeping moss wall. It is so awesome. But look at how cool this is. The sound is incredible. You literally come back here. You can see there's all kinds of little plants just waiting to pop and start growing. Here's a little bonsai tree ready to, you can see the little buds on it ready to pop. You got this really great Japanese maple that's growing over here. And the moss, this stuff is literally dripping everywhere. So, so cool. And then of course it all comes down to a really simple pond. Elegant, there's a couple fish down in there. The stepping stone path that lead you in or back out as you come back up. Literally in this space, the way it's been created with the fence all the way around it, you have no idea that there's another world outside of here. I would literally lose track of time sitting in this space. Mark Garlet, unbelievable job. I just love this. That section is so cool. All right, guys. So there's halfway through, not even, right? I don't know, what have we seen? One, two, three, four, five, six different features. Now we come back out of here and we've got more. Great little spear. That's our small stack spear. Little babbly brook waterfall. Again, an incredible sound. If we come this way, I want to show you that one, but don't want you to focus on that yet. I want you to come over here. I think for a lot of you homeowners that want to do something yourself, like it definitely, it's definitely a hair day. But you try to do a virtual pond tour in the rain with like, look at me. I am like filthy, filthy muddy. Like, <laughs> anyways, what I was saying is for a lot of you DIYers out there that think you need to do things out of giant boulders and all that. And, and yes, I think it looks good. Here's an alternative. There's not a stone in here that's bigger than six inches. But here's what it looks like close up. Great little babbly brook waterfall and really try to focus on that sound. Just amazing. It's a lot of little rocks, but if you didn't have the room to bring in big machines and you had a little slope to work with, you could still do something really cool. Now let's leave this little quiet space and come over to where I would call it maybe a little bit more an aggressive water feature. Combination of large scallop urns, big bowls, big rocks, big humps, lots going on. So look at this waterfall. That's actually a piece of a scalloped urn sitting back in there, which is that headwater. Again, that plant and everything else coming to life really soon as that continues to grow and hang over. Looks like there's some catnip or something back up over in there. It'll continue to creep over. All kinds of creeping thyme sitting amongst the edges. We got this big scalloped urn. Decent flow coming off of it, always my favorite. The snowy bowls drop in different water. And then I love this waterfall here. And I don't love it just because of the way water is dancing all over it. I love it because there's a cool waterfall back in underneath it. Another one that splits off over here. Of course, the sound of this one. I thought it'd be important on that one just to shut up for a second and let you just enjoy it a little bit yourself. Hear the sounds of it, try to take it in. All right, we've got another one. I said like, all right, like I'm getting exhausted because it's a long tour, yes? Here's another six by eight foot pond. Crystal, crystal clear. He's got some native fish in here that happen not like hide underneath that rock all the time. Simple little 12 inch waterfall. And again, when this thing is all planted, you can see the little mini daffodils coming up. Little ferns, grasses, plants all around. They call this the owl pond. I wonder why. I'm back over this way. Love this one. This is an 8 by 11 pond. Again, crystal, crystal clear. 
Got this neat little stream off to the side. Come over here, we got our spillway bowls. We've replaced the top one with a fire bowl, which just looks great. We've all seen the stacks of urns before. I feel like we're at number 15. Another great little pondless waterfall. Those of you that don't know John Adams with Modern Designs out of Tennessee came out here last year, gave Mark a hand for the same Pond College place over here, did this. And I think it's just incredible. John, great job, buddy. It's so cool. Really cool. A hard stone to work with too. This is an angular kind of blue stone. My favorite part is this little stepping stone pathway that cuts right over it. So what did you guys think? How awesome was that to see all those different features out there all in one place? I can't tell you which one is my favorite feature, but it was an awesome experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me which one was your favorite. I don't know what you guys thought, but I came back super inspired. So inspired by everything we did over there in the UK that I came back here and I wanted to change every design I wanted to do in our own aqua gardens. I had big plans for this pond or this feature or that feature. I threw all that out the window because of what I did in the UK. Okay. Those stack slate walls worked so awesome. And for years, I've been dreaming of trying to do that. In fact, so inspired, I sat down and I had to start drawing right away. So I came up with a design where we're gonna create a koi pond just using those stack slate walls. And of course, our own little touch with some big boulders and this and that. When we're doing those stack slate walls, I can't just randomly put them in there, which is kind of what we did out at Mark's. Here, I wanted it to be really tight, really, really cool. And I actually wanted to inspire you guys to try doing it yourself. So I drew it all up knowing exactly how many walls and where they're all gonna go instead of showing you guys here let's take this thing back to the aqua gardens where I think it'll make a whole lot more sense for you and probably for me the other reason I wanted to rip up some of the aqua gardens because last year if you remember we built a pretty epic swim pond over here and the swim pond was so nice I didn't feel like the rest of our features matched up with those so I always want to kind of up the game and change things and I know a huge part of retail is constantly letting your features and your exhibits evolve a little bit. With the combination of doing that last year, going to the UK, and always wanting to kind of revamp the aqua gardens, we start with this feature here. I want to take this whole area, you can see right here, this is the pergola that we're standing underneath right now. I want to bring stack slate walls right up next to this edge here, and then around that mugo pine, that one there. We're going to do some curved stack slate walls, then we'll do some other ones underneath the water. My skimmer box is going to sit someplace over in there, right here. Stay there. Here, there's gonna be a really cool Japanese maple coming over. Then I want a big, big, tall waterfall over there. When I say big, like if I can pull off like three and a half, even four feet tall, just a big, simple drop coming down, it'd be perfect. We got a wetland filter going in over here, kind of an intake bay over here, and then plants, plants, plants. Now you can see we've ripped everything down. The guys got busy. When I said, hey, I wanna redo this, wasted no time, came in here and ripped all these trees down to give us the room and the access. Look, they even ripped a part of the fence down back over there so we can get in here and do this. With this getting redone, we also knew we needed some space. So let me show you what else we're gonna do, come on. So you guys see this crushed stone right here? I love it, but it tends to kind of carry with you as you walk through it. I love the color of it, but we're gonna actually get a price and redo this whole thing with a blue stone patio over here that will actually cantilever out over our stack slate walls right in through here. So it should just tie right in with the rest of that. It'll look great. While we're doing that, same guys that are gonna do that are giving us a price to redo 
this whole pathway, redo this wall, pop these big boulders out of here because I love these big rocks, just not right here. This whole wall gets redone. We're gonna kind of come back into this section and even do a little bench, kind of a little seating area back in here so we can look at this. And if you keep coming this way, you can see what I told the guys to rip everything apart. They literally ripped everything apart. So there used to be a group of five basalt columns over here. We're gonna do a group of seven with our new artificial basalt columns and a little stream that kind of meanders down in here, maybe. I know we're gonna do a stream. I wanna do like a bird loving stream that starts all the way back in here, kind of twists and turns and gently moves down through here. When I say bird loving stream, it's gotta move really slow. Just kind of that babbly brook. And this is the topography that we're looking for to achieve that. The other thing we're gonna redo, clearly this has to turn into something. <laughs> we ripped this apart because we needed the access to get the machines in there to do the other feature. So it gave us an excuse to give this one a complete new look. Guarantee what we're gonna do is off of this waterfall here. We'll take advantage of that three foot, four foot berm over there and then build a bigger waterfall coming down. This is really the entrance to the water garden. So I wanna create something that not only blocks the feature behind it, but gives you a big wow when you walk into here. The other thing we're gonna do, and I'm not sure how we're gonna do this yet. There used to be a bunch of evergreens back here. Right Right now I'm looking at the back side of this berm over in here. So this pathway probably comes in right and through here someplace. The thing that really caught my eye out there is that mossy wall he did. That mossy wall was so cool. And I thought how cool would it be if we could create our own version of a mossy wall off the back side of this berm over here. So how I'm gonna do it, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna use stacked slate walls. I don't know if I'm just gonna use big boulders. I don't know if I'm gonna create something like he did with wood and styrofoam. Just here moss to it I don't know but this part's gonna be a lot of fun and then of course we've got some space over here to maybe do another feature in this area let's go this way <laughs> You're gonna come around the path like this. This is all just gonna turn into landscape. We used to have a small little feature over there. I'd rather just have like some hydrangeas, some color and stuff back in through here. But over here, I definitely wanna do another stack slate wall type feature. So I'm thinking in my mind, a wall will start from back here and kind of twist out like this, kind of come in like this and come back like this. Continue to just kind of go, go, go and tie right into whatever I wanna do with that mossy wall back over there. The idea behind that is we when you're sitting in this space just so awesome when all these leaves fill out back in here get some height back in here so again I can't see what's back over there I don't want to see the koi pond from this space so these walls are gonna get about six feet tall so I can't see over them and then we'll get them running it'll look awesome you come this way I got one more surprise for you guys so I told you there'd be one last surprise and believe it or not it's changing a little bit of what we did with our big recreational swim pond back here the thing we're gonna change the most with this is not the design but what's inside my original idea was just to see like nine or ten of these giant koi swimming around and Greg you know the pond guy the owner of this whole place over here totally trumped me once again and I don't disagree with him he said Brian you know what it'll look cooler than nine or ten large large koi how about 700 tosai baby koi these are one-year-old koi we're gonna put in here and so he wants to try to recreate that whole thing where you know hundreds and hundreds of fish come up and I'll eat from you at once. So we're going to get 700 baby koi someplace around four to six inches in size. Get these big guys out of here and put them in. But I think before we do that, we've got a couple other things we need to do. Next week, watch how we actually take you through the step-by-step -step process of getting this thing crystal clear. Because right now it's crystal clear, but there's a little bit of string algae on there. So Chris is going to take you through the step-by-step -step process and how we clean this big giant thing. So make sure you guys tune in next week to see how we take care of this and keep following us week after week after week because I don't know when I'm going to get started on all of that other stuff. Hey guys, until next week, thanks so much for watching. Tell us what part of the video you like the most and we'll do it again next time. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends and we'll see you soon. Bye.